The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hello, and welcome back to Workbench Wednesdays. It is no secret, my favorite piece of test equipment is the oscilloscope. Their ability to show time versus voltage, frequency versus magnitude, voltage versus voltage, protocol decode, and a large array of automated measurements make them an engineer's best friend. And not only are they versatile at measurements, they also come in versatile form factors. For example, full-featured PC tethered and portable types are now available. So with all of these options, which do you choose? In this video, we compare these three oscilloscope form factors. Now, if you're interested in these specific models, check the link in the description. It'll take you to the Element 14 community, which has more information on them. With that, let's go evaluate oscilloscope form factor so that you can measure. Okay, two quick notes. While the specific models that the Element 14 community sent me are great, keep in mind that the information I am sharing is generic to others as well. Also, the reason I'm talking about form factor is because it's what you consider after you find out which scopes have the analog bandwidth and performance that you need. Okay, now, even though I think the portable form factor is the coolest, let's start with the bench style. These are the form factor we probably think of when we hear the word oscilloscope. There is a screen, some knobs, buttons, and BNCs for inputs. Unlike the bald engineer, bench oscilloscopes have gotten both lighter and thinner over the years. Depending on the scope, there could be a scale and position knob for each channel, or sometimes one set with buttons to multiplex them. Newer bench scopes have touchscreens, and because of that, all manufacturers like to talk about pinch to zoom as part of their user interface, which is something I've never liked. It scales weird and it's awkward to hold your hand, unless you're shooting a video, in which case it seemed to work really well but I do like having the touchscreen to move waveforms around. All of the major functions on a scope, like measurements, have dedicated front panel buttons. Soft buttons or the touchscreen opens menus with many more things to push. Without going into specific models, bench oscilloscopes almost always offer more bandwidth, faster sample rate, higher bit ADCs, and lower vertical noise compared to the other form factors. And it is very common today to integrate other instruments into bench oscilloscopes. For example, this multi-comp has two built in. First is a 3.75 digit DMM that can measure things like voltage, current, and resistance, as well as a dual channel arbitrary waveform generator. I come back to this at the end, but if you don't know what form factor is best to get, stick with the tried and true bench style. For me, the dedicated buttons speed up my usage of the scope. It does take time to learn where they're all located, but that's the case with any oscilloscope or test tool for that matter. Now, let's move on to USB-based scopes, which put us in the realm of software. A USB-based tethered oscilloscope sounds exactly like what it is, a USB device that connects to a computer. Generally, there are no buttons or knobs on the device itself, unless it has a power button. Unlike a bench scope, these boxes are usually just the acquisition hardware. Since there are no knobs or buttons, Everything you do to interact with these scopes is in their software application. Most of these PC-based softwares do incorporate modern usability features like the scroll wheel on the mouse changing values, and of course, they also support clicking and dragging waveforms around. And in my experience, these offer the easiest documentation step because you just hit print screen to get a screenshot capture. Features like measurements, cursors, and triggers are all done with a mouse, touchpad, or a touchscreen if, you know, your laptop has one. While these boxes are very compact, you do have to use them near a computer. For me, I usually document directly into my laptop anyway, so having it on the bench is not a big deal. And if your workbench already has a desktop, this might take up less space than the other scopes. Also, when you do use it with a laptop while running on battery, you get a floating or isolated measurement. USB-based or tethered scopes are a great option for places where you'll have a computer anyway, or you need a lot of channel density they generally have a good cost performance ratio. I dislike that they don't have physical knobs and buttons, but that's probably more of a personal choice. Okay, let's move on to the tablet scope, which is another option for battery powered measurements. 
Multicomp calls this form factor a tablet. I call it portable, although bench scopes are so small now that most people probably call these portables. Now, unlike multimeter scopes or handheld scopes of the past, this is a full featured bench oscilloscope in a relatively small box. In fact, I think it's the same software that runs on this scope. It is powered off of an internal rechargeable battery, which makes it easy to move around the lab. It does have a couple of physical knobs and buttons, but it mostly relies on the touchscreen. As with all of the portable scopes that I've used, these physical controls are there, but they're always compromised compared to a bench scope. For example, on this Multicomp Pro Oscilloscope, the knobs are both multi-purpose. They have a different function depending on which selector is enabled. It took me a little while to get used to them, and I still forget which one is position and which is scale. However, I think that's why I've actually gotten used to moving waveforms around on the touchscreen, just not pinching and zooming. Compared to a bench scope, portable scopes don't usually have as much bandwidth or sample rate, but they're not exactly limiting. For example, this is a 100 megahertz, one giga sample per second sample rate, which is similar to its bench cousin, which has the same sample rate and 200 megahertz of bandwidth. I have noticed it has a little more vertical noise compared to the full bench scope, but when it comes down to it, I'm not going to use this form factor for precision. I'll use it for quick measurements. All of the core features you'd expect to find in the bench scope are here. As I said before, I think it's the same software that the bench scope has. When I need to, I can throw this tool in my bag and carry it around wherever I need to make quick measurements. Also, it does come with a carrying case. Not all scopes in this form factor are equal, however. It's only recent that full-featured portable scopes are becoming available and affordable. But frankly, I am glad they're here. Now, with all of this information, I think there's one lingering question we need to cover. While I was finishing up the recording for this video, I realized I forgot to mention that the tablet comes in a two and four channel version. The two channel version has a built-in DMM. So just like the bench scope, there are instruments built in and it's pretty handy to have a portable scope that is also a full feature DMM. With that, now let's get to the lingering question. And that question is, if all of these have the same analog capabilities that you need, and they're all in your budget, which one should you get? Well, that's a tough question to answer. In summary, like I said before, my go-to answer is the bench scope. It balances performance, features, usability, and cost. While USB or tethered scopes trade off usability, and in some cases analog performance, for a much smaller footprint and usually a lower cost. And then the tablet scopes tend to be the higher cost for their bandwidth or performance, but offers the ultimate in portability. The reality is these all have similar capabilities, so it just comes down to which form factor works for you. Let me know over on the Element 14 community if you agree or disagree with my comparison. The link in the description will take you there. Remember, that is the best place to ask me questions about oscilloscopes or their form factors. I look forward to seeing you in the next video, but for now, it is time for me to get back to doing my favorite thing, oscillogramming on my electronics workbench with all these scopes.